And I heard that the movie Deterrence was actually written for you. Yes. Um, by the director, Rod Lurie. Rod Lurie, the writer-director, who went on to do uh, one of my favorite political movies, The Contender, with Joan Allen and Jeff Bridges and Gary Oldman. Brilliant film. Mm -hmm. His movie prior to that, his first film, was Deterrence. And mm -hmm. um, he approached me at a poker game, actually. Oh, hey. Yeah. <laughs> and said, I'm writing this. And I had written a few, uh, read, rather, a few of his scripts prior, and I thought he was a really good writer. And he said, this would be my directorial debut. I wrote the script. And I'm... He said, I'm 50 pages into the script, writing it, and I have you in mind mm -hmm. for the lead. Yeah. So before I continue, is that something you'd be interested in doing? And he told me what it was about. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, why don't you finish the script? And then, because I don't want to read the first 50 pages. That's no fun. So um, I was flattered beyond belief, because it was a phenomenal piece of writing. Do you feel you were perfectly cast in that? As the um, not-so-assuming president of the United States, <laughs> the one who uh, never was elected. It was an interesting character. They really justified how a Jew got anywhere near the White House <laughs> uh, by saying that I was uh, chosen to be vice president when the vice president was ousted in a scandal. I was chosen, never elected, by the president to take over the vice presidency. And then the president died, and I became the sitting president. And, so the movie takes place with me on the campaign trail to be reelected or mm -hmm. elected for the first time. Yeah. So they really justified how the hell that was possible because the character was very unassuming, and um, it was w one of the more um, intense mm -hmm. uh, challenges of my career. Now you said that Lucky Seven is probably the best piece of work that you've ever done. Do you still feel that? Seven times Wait, Lucky. Seven. What did I say? You said. Something else? Oh my God! Lucky seven. <laughs> Sorry. Seven times I'm lucky. I'm thinking poker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> seven times lucky. Yeah, Gary Yates, Canadian filmmaker. Yeah, Canadian. Okay. Again, called me and said, "I probably have no chance in hell of getting you." Canadians are so sweet. <laughs> and I said, "We'll send the script, you idiot." And uh, it was brilliant. And um, I said, "Yeah, let's do that." And he was a phenomenal. Uh, person to work with in terms of collaborating and rewriting the script together and that is to say he was open to all my suggestions and mm -hmm. and the script needless to say got better now stir magazine I worked with him again though on uh, Niagara Falls yeah no Niagara Motel Niagara Motel um, and I, we're very very dear friends and I love him he's a great Canadian filmmaker mm-hmm Stir Magazine deals with the art of living. So how I'll would, say. How, yeah. So how would you actually define the art of living? Well, it's been said, and it's cliche for a reason. It's about the, you know, the, the travel, the, the voyage, the journey, as opposed to the destination. Mm -hmm. So if you live chasing some brass ring, you're going to miss the journey. Mm -hmm. So it's, in my profession, it's, it's impossible, it seems, to succeed without being single-mindedly ambitious, but you must find balance at some point. And it just took age in my case. I just got to a certain age and thought, I, uh, I can't be happy only when things go well in this particular part of my life. You know? Yeah. So. Now you appeared on the Carson show many times. Four times. What? Yeah. Four? Yeah. How about twenty-four? Really? Damn near. But you talk did you talk to him twenty-four times? I sat on the couch the very first time and every time after, yeah. Oh wow. I don't know why I read four. But anyway. <laughs> the internet. That's awesome. It's worthless. <laughs> But you made him laugh every time with that. Movie. Well, <coughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, he was a great audience to the to the comedians that he thought were funny. He was one of the best ever, mm -hmm. and he made you feel like a million damn dollars. He really did. He made every appearance seem like the most special thing to the performer. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll, I'll I'll cherish that. That's why I'm so particular about the number. <laughs> because I will cherish it probably more than almost anything else in my career because growing up that was the be-all end-all yeah was to not just 
not do stand-up on his show, which I never actually did. I just did panel, but I would do my act from the couch. Panel, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. the phrase they use. Right. This would be panel, even though not. <laughs> um, so I sort of orchestrated it to not do stand-up on the show when they asked me and, and just yeah. to wait till I had a film or something where they could justify bringing me to the couch. Because yeah. Johnny loved impersonations, and I figured if I could just sit next to him on the couch and do the Peter Falk yeah. With the one eye moving there, that's all it would take, and he would be mine, and that's what happened. <laughs> well, yeah. thank you so much, Kevin. And I uh, look forward welcome. to the show tonight. And oh. uh, what's, uh, what's coming up with uh, the next movie? I know you've got some on the go right now, don't you? Yeah, Irons in the Fire, that's the thing. You've got to diversify at a certain point. So as a producer um, and a writer, there's a couple of movies I'm involved with. Uh, bringing to the screen mm -hmm. three nights in August and also we just got the life rights of Sugar Ray Leonard for boxing fans yeah awesome bring his story to the screen um, and then as an actor I'm about to do a George Gallo film um, a great writer who actually wrote one of my favorite comedies Midnight Run with Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin great 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 funny 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 mm -hmm. um, doing that with Luke Wilson is in it and um, some other great actors and also uh, coming back to Canada to shoot after the first of the year, mm -hmm. a movie called Sweetwater, which um, is about um, uh, the basketball player Sweetwater, uh, who went from the Harlem All-Stars, as they were originally called, mm -hmm. to becoming sort of the Jackie Robinson of, of the NBA, the first black uh, star. In 1950, the Harlem All-Stars played the NBA All-Stars mm -hmm. and beat them by 30 points. They were that great. Wow. Yeah. So I play Abe Saperstein, who created the Harlem mm -hmm. All-Stars, owned them, as well as coached them. Awesome. Chaz Palmateri is also in it, and uh, some great actors. Well, we look forward to seeing you in that. All thank right. Thank you so much. Sure. I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Boy, should you. I mean, thank you. <laughs>